we welcome this interactive dialogue on inter alia the importance of the principles of universality and indivisibility <clears throat> and the primacy of human rights as with all your respect to you sir I, i'd like to draw your attention that our debate is not on the topic that you have mentioned so i would kindly ask you to focus on the topic at hand thank you Paragraphs 34, 35, and 36 of the annotated agenda are extremely clear, which makes our statement 100% relevant to this dialogue. I beg you to allow me to speak freely as an NGO under the item agenda as defined in the annotated agenda. We realize that such idealistic goals are utopian, as they can be nullified by devious attempts to redefine human rights. The reasons given for non-compliance are often based on cultural relativism with religious overtones. I'm sorry to call your attention again, sir. Our debate is on the rectification of the legal status of CSCR. All debates, all statements so far have very successfully focused on this topic. I also made a point of thanking statement delegations for doing so. Let me also recall that we have certain documentation in front of us that we are supposed to approach. So if you please, would you be so kind and to focus on these issues? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the CESCR is clearly referred to on page 10 of the annotated agenda, and the points we are raising are covered under items under paragraphs 34, 35, 36. I would ask you if it is possible to continue along those lines, or am I to be cut off because I am not repeating what is being stated by other speakers. You may continue with your statement as long as you will pay heed to my previous remarks, sir. You are welcome. Chairman, I have no time because the clock has been working all the time and I think that is totally unjust. May I ask you to have the clock put back so that I can have a fair treatment like any other speaker. Sir, uh, I guess that uh, we are not going to consume the time of the Council with a, uh, a quite interesting dialogue, but not exactly on the point. So let me say once, and that will be my final remark. Would you please so kind, be so kind and focus in your statement on the topic at hand, and you are most welcome to have it. Please do so. Mr. Chairman, the topic in hand I shall follow and continue. For example, the Islamic Republic of Iran has always had major objections to the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which were expressed in 1981 and again on 7th of December 1984 at the UN General Assembly's Third Committee. It is worth pondering those words quoted in our text as Iran's position has not changed an iota. On 28th of December 1989, a committee of legal experts meeting in Tehran at the 19th Islamic Conference of Foreign Ministers sponsored a Declaration of Human Rights in Islam adopted in Cairo in 1990. It established Sharia law as the only ref source of reference for the protection of human rights in Islamic lands, thus giving it supremacy over the Universal Declaration. I'm awfully sorry, sir, for what I'm going to say, but I have to consider that your statement is out of order. Consequently, I would, I'm regretfully forced to interrupt your statement.